here. Yeah. I see a couple dudes right, right here. You don't need a license or nothing for that either, do you? I don't know what the hell you're doing, huh? Does it freak you out when up? Did you ever lose air or some shit and fall real fast? You can't turn that bitch on a dime though like a plane or whatever. What's going on, friends and fellow paramotor pilots? Check out my cat. She's a little camera shy. So it's a beautiful day here in New Jersey and uh, it's springtime, it's warm out. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about. You can just smell it in the air. They haven't invented smell o vision yet, but it's getting there. But I ran an interesting survey on my channel the other day and it asked you guys what kind of content you like best. General Shenanigans Flights Around New Jersey ranked 47%, number one, flying around, just having fun in New Jersey. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So here are my two primary paramotors, the Scoutmobile with the Factory R and the Maverick Mobile with the normal Factory 3-Blade. Recently I've been flying the Maverick quite a bit and then just the other night I flew the Scout. And making the transition going back and forth, not being fresh on either, made me realize something interesting. Aside from the differences in the torque compensation, the frames, the weights, the harnesses, the power plants, one thing in particular makes such a big difference and that is the propeller. The Maverick's running a three blade E-prop and E-props are very lightweight. The Scout is running a two blade Helix. Helixes are heavy. Aside from all the things that make these paramotors great in their own individual ways, that one thing, the propeller selection and particularly the lightweight propeller is making me gravitate towards flying the Maverick today. I have an E-prop on the way for the Scout, but it's not quite here yet. There's just something about that instant throttle response that you get that makes the engine feel more powerful, it makes the flying more fun, more dynamic, a whole lot more interesting. If you haven't experienced a lightweight propeller, aka an E-prop on your paramotor, you probably should try it. And I say this because at Risky Business Co, we actually stock the two and three blade E-prop propellers for the 268 reduction on the Moster. That's linked down below. If you're flying a heavy prop, particularly a wood prop, maybe a Helix, something that's heavy, large, outdated, and you wanna try something snappy and fast, check out the E-props. That's my fun tip recommendation for the day. So I don't know if you guys heard the news, but Red Bull has a new flavor out. I think it's called like dragon fruit or something weird. As a lot of you know, I'm a uh, Red Bull connoisseur. So I'm gonna take a trip down to the local uh, pilot truck stop establishment and hope that they have this new Red Bull. I only heard that it came out like very recently, so my hopes aren't high, but if they have it, my day will be made. If not, I'll get another Red Bull. Yeah. I see a couple dudes right, right here. Yeah, I lunch from a park down the street. You don't need a license or nothing for that either, do you? Nope. You don't know what the hell you're doing, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's no legal obligation, but it's a smart thing to do. Money-wise, um, about 15000 for everything. Oh, really? It ain't cheap. Enough. Yeah. How long do you stay up in one shot? Normally about an hour, but a full tank, you can go for three hours. Does it freak you out when up? Did you ever lose? Air or some shit fall real quick? Uh, every so often, like collapses or motor failures, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. You can't turn that bitch on a dime though, like a plane or whatever. No, you can yeah, crank yeah. around, like in the size of a soccer field, you can do a full figure eight. Can you rent them somewhere? Or, or is there a place to train you in? Training, I go, I always recommend a place in Florida. Oh, really? There's not really any great ones, like locally, uh, but I learned in Florida, so. Where in Florida? Uh, right in the center, Lake Wales. It's called Aviator Paramotor. <laughs> yeah, man, have a good one. Well, no uh, luck with the new Red Bull flavor, so I just got a blueberry, but that guy was from the Carbonated Water Supply Company. He's got like a hose going into a tap into the building, I guess for their soda machines. I've never seen that take place before. I love little interactions like that with people that see paramotors and they ask about them, but I never freaking catch them on camera because I'm like not prepared and I feel weird filming people. But that kind of thing happens often and I try to be a good ambassador and answer people's questions and get them excited about para fanning. Para fanning! Um, I'm gonna sit my Red Bull. We're gonna get down to the park. I think Jeff is gonna be there. And it's just a marvelous day. Look at that, sunlight.
All right, so we are down here at the local park establishment. And as you may be able to see behind me, there's a bunch of lacrosse games, a bunch of baseball practice, kids on the playground. This place is packed because it's so beautiful out. So we're gonna do the most responsible thing we can do and carry our gear out back behind the playground. There's a big open spot that's into the wind. We're gonna launch and Jeff and I just discussed our random plan is into the wind way over that way. There's this park neither of us have ever flown from. I've been there on foot before, but it's right next to a prison and uh, we're gonna land there I think and then fly back. We both have eight liters of gas, which should be sufficient. And there goes Jeff walking through the playground with his fair motor. It's funny. All right, I'm gonna grab my gear, carry it out there, and uh, see you in the air. There goes Jeff. What a beautiful launch! Almost a cage scraper. New Jersey shenanigans videos. I'm a deliver. We're flying to a prison. Or right next to a prison. All right, so we just climbed above this ridge with my approximately 900 feet per minute climb rate on the Maverick factory mobile with the three blade prop. Measured in one of the last videos. It's scientific, it's proven. Barack Obama said so. So basically the flight plan is go over this ridge out to that reservoir, that blue body of water straight ahead. And then the park and the uh, prison are somewhere over there. Well, that reservoir is very full of water right now. There's no shoreline. So uh, we're gonna skirt it, stay nice and high because I don't have flotation on board and I don't want to drown today. Dang, New York City and Philadelphia are looking insane today. You can see like both the upper and lower, whatever they are. I don't know much about the city. I live about an hour away. Rarely ever go out there. So here we are, midway across the first reservoir. And uh, I can kind of see the prison out that way. The New York City skyline is just looking insane. I can even see out by like Sandy Hook and where the bay kind of leads into the ocean over there. I don't know how it's showing up on the GoPro, but there's a road sign down there that is glowing bright green from the sunlight. That's one of my favorite things because I remember being in my mom's balloon when I was just a small child. And I remember kind of crossing over the highways and when the sun hit the right angle, you would see all the road signs light up like that. It was just really cool for some reason. It's still going. I must be like perfectly in line with it. That's so bright. I can't see. Right down there is a liquor store. Drop a comment if you think I should do a uh, flying to the liquor store video. That would be kind of ironic. I don't know if people would be into it. All right, so we're on our final descent. There's the park, there's the prison. I think it's kind of common knowledge. Maybe it's in an aeronautical handbook somewhere that you're not supposed to linger over a prison. I'm not gonna linger, but I just wanna take a look, see if we can see anything, you know. Maybe catch an escapee dodging a fence, running from a canine. Like live PD up in here. Oh, no way! I see prisoners! Yeah, I don't know what uh, these guys are in for, but hopefully we can brighten their day with a, a quick flyby. They're out in the basketball court in their orange jumpsuits. He's like, hey man, can you throw me a pack of cigarettes? to be some type of security vehicle driving around the perimeter. Hopefully I am of no concern to him up at this altitude just on a lazy cross-country flight. Nothing to see here, mister. Honestly, the majority of that prison looks abandoned. It's just like one little division over there that has people in it. And that is our park, Target Acquired. No wind indicators. We're gonna have to 
guess the wind direction. Seems kind of fast. Actually, not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Here comes Jeff. He's attacking from the sun, using it as an advantage. He's so fast. Howdy. We made it. Was it my imagination or was it like a rocket ship coming this way? Did you feel that layer? When we turned? Yeah, coming downwind. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like looking up at the wind. It's like, is everything all right? <laughs> I felt like I was going about 70. Yeah, there were some weird bumps all the way out. Yeah. Like the, did you feel those thermals when we first took them? Yeah, right by the hill and there was of birds. All those birds, I'm going, oh no, <laughs> we're in trouble. Yeah, I was coming up to you to do a wingtip I touch, and they were just like, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, I know, and I was like, ah, let's do it on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Engine's still in one piece. You got your pre-flight check, your post-flight check, and your mid-flight check. <laughs> just make sure nothing's falling off halfway through. I had something happen the other day for the first time on the Scout. This, I had to lubricate. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Oh, downwind launch or hike to the other side of the field? <laughs> we could do like the other night and just set up in opposite directions and one of, okay. us, will, one of us will get it right. <laughs> What's that? No, we were at another park. Oh, that's cool. And you'd be able to go from park to park. Pretty much, yeah. No, we're gonna fly back home. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Boop. Oh. <laughs> when you're on a cross country flight and your engine <laughs> isn't starting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is starting to sweat. Did somebody order a couple of downwind launches? Who's gonna eat today? Yeah, this is Totally downwind. Hello! There goes Jeff, running like a gazelle. Fastest man alive. All right, we're going over here to this other reservoir where there's a boat ramp where people go to take trendy pictures. Well, this is it. They've got this whole road under construction. But uh, I always ride my motorcycle here and take trendy pictures with the backdrop. So that's cool. Look at that freaking view, dude. This water's shallow, so I'm safe for a little uh, foot draggy action. Oh, Hello. I don't know if they have fishing reels out or not. I'm so glad I came over here. Having so much fun. Carefully foot dragging the shallow water. Yeah! <laughs> oh, can't get out of my heart as far enough. Dude, this is really beautiful. Oh, dude, I gotta get a picture of Jeff. He looks so sick. Hold your position, Jeff. This is what legends are made of. And I drop my phone. For the Instagram! I'm gonna get so many likes.
lights. All right, we're headed home. Jeff's on my left, Person's there. Park we landed at's there. Other reservoirs there. We're gonna take a little bit of more north approach, cut into the valley and head home, which is like directly towards the sun right now. <laughs> my carabiner does open in flight. Curiosity. <laughs> Progress report, Jeff is behind me. That is the uh, middle school? Elementary school? Middle school that I went to. Got bullied, got uh, swirlies in the toilet there. Just kidding, that never happened. Hey, Jim May. It ain't no thing if it ain't no thing. And we made it back to the park. Almost officially. People are clearing out. All the soccer moms are picking up their little Billies and Jacobs and Alfredos. All right, time to come in for a landing. But not without a quick little barrel roll first. So that's about all I've got for you guys in this episode. I wanna leave you with two things, sort of. There's a whole segment of this video that I decided to edit out that dealt with someone impersonating me on TikTok and how I got my TikTok account back, and two, how someone tried to run a scam on you guys through Facebook. I'm gonna just post that over on my second channel, Uncut, just because it was interesting, but it made this video way too long. So check out my Uncut channel if you wanna see that. Also, check out this. So we're working on some blueprint posters. They're not available just yet, but they're gonna be a limited run, hand printed by yours truly. Make sure you stay tuned and stay in touch on YouTube, because I'll be announcing it in one of these videos, so make sure you're subscribed. Instagram, because I'll be sharing it over there. The blueprint design is one of the most popular designs at Risky Biscuits Co., and I wanna offer it as a super exclusive, neat, poster that you can proudly hang on your wall. Aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next episode. Till then, fly safe, have fun, peace. Zip.